Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, I can't present my paper in the main channel in the Turkish language, but let me uh, technically, is it, is it possible here? Let me do it in English. Um, as also said, as also Dr. Uh, Falkenberg said yesterday, uh, I have completed my PhD in Tilburg in the Netherlands on the Gulen movement. The focus of my thesis uh, was um, on the message of the Gulen movement for the reconciliation of social conflicts, especially from the perspective of uh, social co cohesion. After finishing my PhD, I um, realized, I discovered that I didn't know too much about the Gulen movement. And I have decided to start with new studies on the movement. But this time, from the perspective of uh, the criticism, criticism of the movement, what are the critics uh, on the movement in the Netherlands, in the, United, in, in the United States, in Germany, in Turkey, or in the UK? Are there any similarities or, or differences? And from which groups does the movement receive the critics? And why? What are the fears of people on the movement? And again, why? And to what extent is the movement's activism, educational and, and uh, intercultural activism, a source of uh, religious or social conflicts in these countries for the host society? And uh, how can the criticism be explained from the perspectives of social, political, or religious infrastructure of these countries in which the Gulen movement operates? And also, what are the effects of the local conditions on these received critics? I think these are interesting questions to study. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm not going to talk about these interesting uh, questions, uh, but I think such uh, uh, such, an, such approaches can help the host society, the authorities, but also the movement itself to, to understand the movement, to, to analyze the movement. As said uh, by uh, Professor Weller yesterday in his uh, evaluation, the movement is not perfect. I think that is a, it's, it's an important, relevant reflection. And such a focus, maybe at the next conference, entitled The Criticism of the Movement, can help the movement and the people. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, let me say something about, about my theme uh, for, uh, for today. The next min minutes, I'm going to talk about Fatullah Gulen's Islamic ethic and its practical perspectives. First of all, I want to define the concept of Islamic ethics shortly. What does it mean in the Islamic tradition generally? And what's its meaning within the vision of the Gulen movement particularly? And then I'll make a link to the concept of the middle way. At the end of my presentation, I'll discuss uh, several principles recalling, reminding ethical values from Gulen's perspective. Islamic ethic, or in Turkish ahlak, is also an Arabic word. Word, it means the proper moral conduct. <clears throat> it implies positive traits of character, especially those noble qualities <clears throat> that per, that were perfected and modeled by the Prophet Muhammad. In other terms, <clears throat> ahlak is the concept concept of the virtues that comprise good character in Islamic moral teachings. It was generally shaped as an amalgamation of the teachings of the Quran, the prophetic tradition, the Sunnah, 
and the, fuch, the precedence of Islamic jurists embedded uh, in an Islamic tradition such as Shi'iti or Sunni. In general, I can say that Islamic ethic is based on the Quranic principle Amri bil ma'ruf wa nahya anil munkar. It means commanding good and forbidding evil. This is the general principle of the Islamic ethic. Based on my earlier studies on Gulen's, Fatullah Gulen's works and speeches, uh, I can say that uh, his understanding, his ethical understanding, is based on this Quranic principle. Amri bil ma'ruf wa nahya anil munkar, commanding good and forbidding evil. Ahlak is about the human being. It's about a person's ethical development. <coughs> when I screened the books and speeches of Kulan, I came to the conclusion that Kulan puts the human being at the center of all things. He puts the human being at the center of his activities and projects. To him, character education, character training, and morality education are important tools to discover ethical values and to learn them. Educational projects and dialogue activities also aims to discover these ethical values. In his ethical and educational understanding, Gulen focuses on being a good example to others in Turkish temsil. His focus is not on preaching, also in Turkish tabli. Just his focus is on temsil. So being a, good, being a good example to others is a constant theme in his teaching, in his, also in the vision of the Gulen movement. And uh, it can be uh, found in the movement's educational and dialogue project. For example, the teachers uh, bring their students together with handicapped and with people living in poverty. And uh, the movement's uh, vision on ethics uh, involves not only uh, schools, but also families, communities, media, and business activities. Now, I would like to make a link uh, to the concept of the middle way. Middle way is an important con concept in Gulen's teaching. It's to a great extent similar to Aristotle's conceptualization. Aristotle criti criti criticized the Platonic virtues versus thesis categorization, and he classified the uh, phenomena in three groups. Two of them are thesis, ifrat and tefrit, excess and deficiency. And the other one is the virtue, the main, the middle way. In his sermons entitled Ethical Considerations, Ahlaki Mulazalar, Gulen interprets and repeats the Islamic concept of, of Sirat al Mustaqim, the straight path. And uh, it is also recited um, in a Muslim's prayers 40 times a day, especially in the Surah Fatiha, as the middle way between Ifrat and Tafrit, excess and deficiency. Based on my studies, I can argue that the core concept that constitutes Gulen's views and thus the vision of the Gulen movement participants can be characterized as the middle way, Sirat al Mustaqim. And all the concepts of the movement are bundled in the Hizmet discourse, service to one's fellow human beings. As some of you know, Hizmet is the other name of the Gulen movement. And uh, each underlying principle of, of Gulen's teaching drives directly from the idea of living to serve humanity through the Quranic principle, what I mentioned, commanding good and forbidding evil. Amri bil ma'ruf wa nahyan al-munkar. This involves 
taking the middle way, promoting features, and trying to prevent the spread of features. These principles include having an ultimate goal, altruism, living for others, sense of personal responsibility, and the person of hurt. Gulen considers these to be the sine qua non attributes of a person of his met. Let me now move to some of Gulen's principles uh, reminding ethical values, some principles recalling moral values. Based on a Quranic verse, Gulen explained that everything, everyone acts according to his disposition and thus displays his own character. It is an important step in acquiring moral values when a person knows, feels, and pursues his mistakes. Gulen possesses four principles to see own fallacies and faults, defects and deficient deficiencies, and to stay away from delusions and caprices and to find the right path, the middle way. The first principle is to find a guide, a sp maybe a spiritual guide, who will enlighten and inspire the individual in organizing his life. An educator who will redirect him to the right path. A teacher who will remind him some of the gospels of life. The second principle is the selection of a good friend or a coach who reminds ethical values and shows one's fallacies and faults. The third principle is getting rid of fallacies and faults and adapting a good morality is to listen to value what has been said negatively or positively about yourself and to interrogate yourself proportionally. In this respect, a critical reflective attitude always offers offer a learning opportunity. The last fourth principle for gaining good, good moral values and eliminating bad habits and immorality is to be among people and to be involved in human society. This interaction enabled the person to learn human values and to discover feelings and emotions about himself. Further, the movement has set out to produce what Gulen calls the golden generation, Alten Nesil, a virtuous generation that can integrate modern realities with Islamic values such as altruism, low self-sacrifice, self self-control and reflection. Gulen argues that such a new generation can only be re realized through the development of individuals' minds, their behavior, and spirituality, their spirituality. Metaphorically speaking, I call them three, three H, heads, hurts, and hands or habits. I can say that Gulen's moral education is based on these uh, three aspects. Three aspects that, can, that uh, are essential to integrate Muslim identity with, with modern re uh, realities and so to build a golden generation. Finally, I can, I can say that the movement participant, par participants use the ethical thoughts and practices of Fethullah Gulen as an instrument to create, to make public spaces for positive relations between Muslims and non-Muslims. Central elements of his ethical message are justice, modesty, equality, patience, forgiving, understanding, low altruism, humility, respect for rights, truthfulness, responsibility, and so on. I think many Western thinkers such as Jürgen Habermas, Bikku Parekh, Cartwell Smith, Hans Kung, they have also expressed such ideas in the West. It can be said that Gulen recombines Islamic values with new forms in new practices also in the West. 
Therefore, I think that the movement has the characterization of a hybrid of tradition and modernity. Two professors from, from the Netherlands, Professor Herman Beck and uh, Gerard Wiegers, in their recent book uh, about Islam and ethic, they categorized three, three Islamic mainstreams in a Western society. One of the mainstreams um, they describe is the modern Salafia Islam. The second one is the liberal individu individualistic stream, and the third one is the middle orthodoxy. It's also described as the Vesatia, Vesatia movement. Vesatia literally means the middle way. For example, the scholar uh, Al Karadawi is linked with the Vesatia movement. And these scholars, uh, Professor Beck and Wiegers uh, from the Netherlands, they categorize in an interview that the Gulen movement, they categorize in an interview the Gulen movement as a special form, as a special segment of the, uh, of within the Besatia movement, within the middle current. So in closing, based on my own observations inside and outside the movement, and, uh, and on my earlier studies on the movement, I can arguably say that the movement is a movement of Itidal, Sirat al-Mustaqim, a movement practices Gulen's Islamic ethic of the middle way, which can accommodate local differences. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Celik. And uh, in fact, this concludes panel number one of today on contemporary interpretation of traditional terms. Uh, we are also on the middle way. We are still 15 minutes uh, um, late, but we made up 15 minutes, so I think that's okay. I suggest now that we spend 15 minutes on a discussion. Uh, so please, everybody, concentrate on that. And then you have a 20 minutes um, coffee break, uh, after which you resume punctually at 11.30. So I am taking your questions, and please wait for the microphone to come to your place. There's a question here in the front. Anybody has a microphone? Here in the front. Row one. The lady in the green T-shirt. Yeah, Claudia Dansch, my name is. I want to quickly go on Herrn Cilic. Äh, weil ich mich freue, dass er auch nochmal auf das Konzept der Wasatia eingegangen ist, Yusuf Al-Karadawi. Und er hat eingangs ja kurz erzählt, dass er in seiner Habitil, in der Doktorarbeit, okay, ähm, die Kritik in verschiedenen europäischen Ländern in der Türkei an der Güllenbewegung auch untersucht hat. Und sie sagten jetzt auch, dass äh, diese ähm, Güllenbewegung faktisch als spezielle Form dieser Wasatia auch gesehen wird. Und die Wasatia steht für die Muslimbruderschaft, Karadawi steht für die Muslimbruderschaft. Mich würde interessieren, dass bei, ob bei dieser Kritik in den verschiedenen europäischen Ländern und der Türkei auf diesen Aspekt abgezielt wird. Ist das das Gemeinsame an der Kritik?